Hello everyone. In this video lecture, we'll learn about Hegel's approximation method, which is one of the technique to find initial basic feasible solution of a transportation problem. So let's begin. So before we start, let's have a recap of what we have covered so far. We have already seen two techniques to find the initial basic feasible solution, the northwest corner rule and the least cost method. So let's see what this new method has different than the previous two methods. So it works on the concept of penalties also known as opportunity costs. So let me give you the definition of penalty first. It is the difference between the smallest cost and the next highest cost in a particular row or column. So Vogel's method does not only focus on the smallest cost, it also takes into consideration the difference between the smallest and the next highest cost. And the significance of penalty can be understood with this example. That suppose if you transport one unit through the cell having cost rupees 3 and if you transport through the cell having cost rupees 6, then the difference is rupees 3. So that means if you by mistake select the cell having high cost for the transportation, then you are actually spending 3 rupees more per unit. So that is the penalty. So that has to be taken into consideration. So Vogel's approximation method is basically focusing on computing the penalties and then taking the decision. And one more point that if in any row or a column, there is more than one cell having the smallest cost, then penalty in that case will be zero. So you will better understand this computation through the coming example. So here I've taken the same example, which has been already solved using northwest corner rule and the least cost method in our previous videos. So the same steps we need to do here, we should first make sure that the problem is balanced. So the total supply should be equal to total demand, which is very well satisfied here. And the number of basic variables is eight m plus n minus one. So we know that we'll be having the eight allocations in the end. So let's move ahead and apply the Vogel's approximation method on this particular example. So as I've just told you, the very first step should be computation of penalties for all the rows and all the columns. And there is a space to write the penalties adjacent to the supplies and below the demands, but there should not be any confusion in the figures. Your supplies and demand should be distinguishable from the penalties. So you can draw a line to differentiate between them and write them very clearly. So we'll be computing the penalties now. So let's take the example of first row. In the first row, the minimum cost is one and the next highest cost is two. So the difference between them is one. So the penalty of row one is one. Similarly, you compute the row penalties. In each row, the difference is turning out to be one. And using the same formula, you can compute the column penalties. So I'll suggest you, you can take a pause here in the video and do the computation yourself. And you can verify the row and the column penalties calculated like this. So what is the next step? We have to choose that row or column with the highest penalty. That means out of these nine penalties written in front of you, you have to select the largest value. And we can clearly see the largest value is three. And in this particular example, we do not have a unique choice. We are having two values. We are having two penalties having the same value. So there is a tie here and we have to now break this tie. So the rule for breaking the tie is that you select it arbitrarily. So I'll be selecting the first column for allocation. So remember, the highest penalty rule is actually helping me in deciding which row or which particular column will be allocated first. So based on that, I have selected first column for the allocation by choosing this three as my largest penalty. So once you have selected the column or the row for making the allocation, then in that row or column, you choose the cell with the minimum cost. So you can see in the first column, the cell with the minimum cost is the last one, the fourth cell, it is four comma one, 
with the cost of transportation 1. So I'll be selecting the cell 4 comma 1 for the allocation and the rule of allocation says I'll be transporting 15 units through this cell because as per the rule of allocation it should be the minimum of the respective supply and the demand. So this gives me my first allocation here and then I have to update the supply and the demand. So you can see the demand of destination 1 is completely satisfied while the supply of source 4 is updated from 20 to 5 units. And let me cross out the first column because the demand of destination 1 is completely satisfied now. So after you cross out the column, now you have to repeat all these steps again. That means I have to compute the penalties again. And since if you have crossed out the column, we will be only needing to compute the row penalties. If you had crossed out a row, then you will be needing to compute only the column penalties. So here I will be computing the row penalties again by using the same formula, the difference between the minimum and the next highest cost. And you can see the example and the calculation and coincidentally here the updated row penalties are also turning out to be same 1111 and now out of these 8 penalties written in front of me I can see 3 is the largest penalty so this time my choice is I will be selecting the 5th column for making the allocation and in the 5th column my choice is the topmost cell the first cell because in the fifth column the cell with the minimum cost is the cell 1 comma 5 with the cost of transportation 1. So once I have made the decision of selecting the cell then I have to make the allocation there. So you can see there will be 10 units transported through this cell because it should be the minimum of 10 and 10 which is turning out to be 10. And now you update the supply and demand respectively. So this is the same situation which we faced even in the least cost method when it was applied to the same example that when supply and demand are simultaneously satisfied while making the allocation then this will lead to a degenerate JC feasible solution. But at this time you need to remember what to do. You cannot cross both the row or the column. You have to cross one of them. So let's choose it arbitrarily and let's cross the row this time and keep a balance zero on the demand side. So that gives me my second allocation. So now you again repeat the process and since this time a row has been crossed out I have to compute the new column penalties again. So if you look at the new column penalties they are turning out to be same 0, 1, 0 and 3 and now out of these all the penalties written in front of you 3 again is the highest penalty choice. So this means again this time I have to make an allocation in the fifth column and in the fifth column I have three cells now the cost 8, 7 and 4 and 4 is the minimum cost cell so I will be choosing this for allocation and then you can see the allocation is turning out to be 0 unit here and then after updating the supply and demand I get to see that my fifth column gets crossed out and now repeat the process again. Since the column has been crossed out you have to compute the new row penalties. So still our new row penalties are turning out to be same 1, 1 and 1 and you can see there is still a tie between the largest penalty. So let's break the tie arbitrarily and choose the second row for allocation. You can choose any other row or column with highest penalty but I have made my choice I have selected the second row for allocation and in the second row the cell with minimum cost is 2 comma 2 and there goes the allocation of 10 unit and then you update the supply and the demand so demand of destination 2 gets completely satisfied so second column gets 
crossed out and supply of source 2 gets updated from 20 to 10 units. This time you have compute crossed out a column again you update the penalties you compute the new row penalties so now we see a change in the value of the row penalties so the largest penalty now is 4 so again I have to make an allocation in second row and in second row I have just left with two cells 7 and 3 are the respective cost so I'll be selecting the cell with cost 3 as a minimum cost cell and you make an allocation of 10 units here and update the supply and demand exactly in the same way as we are doing continuously. So this time the supply of source 2 is exhausted so second row gets crossed out and this time you have crossed out a row so you compute the column penalties again and you will see they turn out to be same and then you choose the largest penalty which is 2. So my choice is this time I have to allocate in 4th row and in the 4th row the cell to be allocated is the with cost 3 and there goes the allocation of 5 units and this time again once we have the situation where the supply and demand simultaneously get exhausted so break the tie arbitrarily you cross either row or the column so this time I have crossed the column and retained a 0 on the supply side. And finally, when you are just left with one row or one column, you don't need to follow any rule. Actually, you can't compute penalties here. So you just simply have to allocate whatever entries are written in front. For example, in third row, the supply is 15 unit. In the fourth row, the supply is 0 unit. And in the third column, the demand is 15. So 15 plus 0 is matching with 15 because the problem is balanced. So you simply allocate 15 units to the third row, 0 units to the fourth row and balance all the amounts. So this gives me my initial basic feasible solution that completes our process and I get my initial basic feasible solution through VAM technique. And you can see that this is a degenerate basic feasible solution as two of the basic variables are turning out to be value 0. And if you compute the cost of transportation, it turns out to be 150. So you multiply the allocation with the respective cost in the cells and you get to know that the cost is 150. And if you compare the solution with the existing techniques, you see with least cost we were getting 185, with north west corner rule we were getting 245 and now we are getting 150. So definitely at least for this example, VAM method is giving us the best initial basic feasible solution. So what conclusions we can draw from this? That in general, Vogel's approximation method is better than the existing techniques. However, in some example, VAM and least cost method give comparable answers. But as compared to northwest corner rule, both VAM and least cost method are far, far better. But exceptions are always there, but VAM and least cost method are comparable. So, so far we have learnt the three techniques to find the initial basic feasible solution, North West, least cost and the VAM. We know the second step in solving the transportation problem is to find the optimal solution. We have not yet found the best solution which will give us the minimum cost of transportation. So, to do to learn how to find the optimal solution, we have to see the next video.